What's up, Pre-PT fam? I'm Ben Kim, and welcome back to the 2.4 Pre-PT channel, where I give tips and strategies to help low GPA students get into PT school. Today, we're gonna to be diving into the first part of the how to get into PT school with a low GPA series, which is how to select your top five physical therapy schools for low GPA applicants. When looking for physical therapy schools, there are a lot of factors to consider from location to GPA, GRE, culture between the students and the faculty, the values of the school, and the list continues. But for us low GPA students who have under 3.0 cumulative, our options are very limited. And this is because a lot of schools have their minimum cumulative GPA requirement set at a 3.0. And this is a problem because if we don't hit that minimum cumulative GPA requirement, the schools won't even look at our applications. They are automatically out of the contestant pool. And so what that ultimately means is about 80% of the total PT schools are no longer an option for us. And so knowing that, we need to understand what we can do to improve our application chances and how to selectively pick schools to match our strengths. So some things that we can change are the cumulative GPA. For some of us, if we're on like the board of 2.7, 2.8, we might wanna just retake enough classes to boost our cumulative GPA to a 3.0, so then now we can be seen by a lot more schools. But for those who are maybe a little lower, maybe 2.5, 2.6, maybe even 2.7, it's hard once you have taken so many credits to actually boost that cumulative. And so um, now we're looking at prereq GPA. And this is because a lot of schools, or a good amount of schools, will actually replace your new grade that you just got in that prereq class with your old one. So if you got an A now and before you had a C minus, they would actually just replace that. So you, with that logic, you can see how we can change the prereq GPA significantly. Another thing we can change is our last 60 units GPA. And this is something that uh, quite a few grad schools are now adopting. Um, and they're looking at kind of trends, right? Because they're starting to realize that, you know, during undergrad, a lot of us might not know what we really want to do. We're not focused, right? And now once we kind of realize what we want to do, uh, if we're willing to put in work and show them, you know, last 60 units. So that's, that's another thing that we can change. And lastly, another thing we can change is the GRE. So I've heard from a lot of my mentees that they'll just take the GRE their first time, not studying, never doing a practice test. And so this is actually something we could change drastically just by learning how to study for it and putting in the time. And so now knowing what we can change and knowing what can be our strengths, let's try to think about what kind of schools that we want to apply for. And so the schools we want to apply for would be those that replace your prereq grades on retakes, of course, right? Like we just talked about, if you get an A and you had a C minus or a D before, it just replaces it. That significantly increases your prereq GPA. And also, we want to look for schools with a low GPA requirement. So I'm probably something at around the 2.7, 2.6, even I think there might be some with a 2.5 uh, minimum cumulative GPA requirement. So look out for those. Remember, we got to make sure that these requirements are under our cumulative GPA. Another thing to look for are schools that look at your last 60 units. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, but this is just uh, schools are willing to look at you now, right? So if you're willing to put in the time to take 60 units, and these are probably gonna be your retakes anyways. And so you're willing to put in that time and you show them you can handle that school load because you're gonna have to handle an even, even heavier load in PT school. So this is kind of their way of seeing your new track record of you now uh, as compared to you maybe a year, two, three, four years ago when you weren't ready. And we also wanna look for schools that require a GRE. And this is because we already have a low cumulative GPA uh, we want ways to stand out and so we need every opportunity we can get from all the other possible categories to lift ourselves up and so i would recommend looking for schools that require a gre and one more thing to possibly look for is schools that value experiences this doesn't apply to all schools but some schools really look at the experiences of the students to see how invested they are with the physical therapy profession or how closely does this applicant match with the school's values now, before we move on, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that like button because it helps the algorithm and it helps the channel grow. Now, with that said, let's move on to the next topic, and that is that every school ranks their applicants a little bit differently. I've talked to schools that really don't even look at your letter of rec, that don't even really look at your statement essay, and all they really care about is your GPA because there's some schools that really just look at who can pass our curriculum. At the end of the day, they are a business, and whenever someone drops out of their program, they lose a lot of money. 
If you think about each term as costing maybe $10,000 in tuition, and we're looking at just tuition, then if someone drops out in the second term, and say there's like 10 terms, they're missing out eight terms of money from that one student or potential student. And so naturally, some schools will just tend to go with, uh, okay, who can, who has the best cumulative prereq GPA? I want those people in my program and maybe GRE and that's all I'm gonna look at, all right? And then there's other schools that care more about, okay, who actually wants to do physical therapy? And so those schools will look more at uh, like your last 60, your prereqs, your experiences, um, your letter of recs, your statement, as because they care more about, do these applicants actually want to be physical therapists? Do they know? But at the same time, of course, they also have to make sure that these students are capable of handling a PT load. And that's why uh, they look heavily at your prereq GPA, your last 60, because these are things you can change. And if you really, really want this, you can make it happen. And so to learn how each school ranks their applicants, once you come up with your top five to 10 list, I would recommend contacting each school either through uh, email, either through phone call, or even meeting up in person uh, during an info session, which I highly recommend to find out how they rank their applicants. And so now we've talked about what we can change. We talked about what to look for in a school. So where do we find these schools now? And so I'll show you on screen. All right, guys, so let's get into it. This is how I would start looking for my schools. First off, we gotta go to the PTCAST website. So you just Google search PTCAST. First one that pops up, ptcast.org. From there, we're gonna click on um, the program directory. And funny thing is uh, PTCAST actually just remade their whole website. So I actually just had to re-record this because I actually filmed this about a month or two ago. So from here, you're going to click on list of programs. And now if you don't have any schools in mind, maybe you have a specific state you want to start out with. So um, I'm from California, so we could go to California. I'll tell you right now. Um, California won't have many schools. If you've watched my previous videos, I've told you, like if, if you're applying for PT school, we're low GPA candidates, you're gonna want a school that wants your GRE because that's just another thing that you can show them that you belong. And so, uh, having trouble here pressing yes. Okay, there we go. And California, there we go, okay. So these are the schools that are in California and require GRE. And so, I mean, you can click on any school and I'm just gonna show you the general process. So first thing that you'll see is the program information. All this is really nice. And once you kind of know what top five schools you want, then this will be a good thing to read. Or if you just wanna find out more about the school right away as you're picking your top five, feel free to do that as well. But what we're gonna focus on today is mainly the admission requirements. So you'll press that tab. And then you can see the supplemental requirements, GRE, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so let's see, Mount St. Mary's, that's school we're looking at. Did they require the GRE. What's more important is you scroll down and you look at what their requirements are. You need at least a 150 in verbal, 150 in quantitative, and a 4.0 in analytical writing. And so what does this mean? This means that if you don't hit this, any one of these numbers, your application will be automatically discarded. They won't look at it. Thank you for the free money. Um, get the reference requirements. These are your letters of rec. They need three. And this will tell you exactly who is or what type of evaluators they want. All right, we'll focus more on that later. Observation hours, same thing. Now, GPA requirement, right? 3.0 cumulative, 3.0 prereq, and 3.0 at your undergrad degree granting institution. All right, so if you don't meet any of these, that means that you will not be able to apply here once again. And so this is why I say it's tough for low GPA students, right? Most schools in California, most schools in the United States, they want at least a 3.0 in all three categories or two categories, right? And so if you're on the cusp, you're at like a 2.8 right now, maybe a 2.9, you can easily, through retaining classes, get yourself back up to a 3.0. If you're far off, I was at 2.4, it would take probably two years to get to a 3.0. So um, I chose schools that didn't really bank on that or that didn't really set that kind of cumulative GPA requirement at a three, right? Uh, pre requirement, they can set out whatever they want. I'm gonna hit it. So um, 
Yeah, and also be sure to read the additional information. Some schools will have an overall undergrad cumulative GPA score right here, but they'll have an exception. Like if you have under three, then we'll look at this is this instead. So just because you see 3.0 here or higher doesn't mean that uh, they necessarily won't take you. Be sure to read the fine print as well. Um, but yeah, that's the main takeaway from this. And let's, let's look at another example. Let's look at a school that um, you would kind of uh, want to be applying to. So let's go to the school. I'll just do one of uh, the schools I apply to, MGH in Boston. If you guys want to take a look at it, feel free. Not sponsored. <laughs> um, but yeah, go to admission requirements. They require GRE, yes. This, these are their requirements, 146, 145, 3.5. Okay, good. Um, scroll down, observation hours, okay. GPA requirement, oh, look at that. There's nothing there. What does that mean? It means they don't have a, a minimum requirement, right? Um, and also you wanna look at the fine print. This program uses the highest grade for repeated courses and calculations for prereqs to GPA, which is one of the things that we want in a school when to increase our chances when we're looking at uh, what schools to apply to because prereqs we can retake all day um, and you know we're all driven for this we're gonna get it um, and so those grades can be replaced they're gonna take our highest can make us more competitive and this is where those who want it the most are going to be able to get it because it's when you can retake as many times or when you have the chance to retake and replace it's all about the now. It's not about what you did before. It's all about what, how bad you want it now. And so, um, yeah. Okay. And I'll show you guys one last school. Probably smart if you guys take notes of these schools that I'm showing you right now. But if you go to Arizona, there's also a school here by the name of AT Still. Um, you go there, mission requirements. Let's see what they got. So, GRE required, yes. Uh, 140, 140, 3.5, okay, okay. Uh, 30 observation hours, and look at that. Minimum GPA score. Overall undergrad cumulative 2.8. Program prereq 2.8. All right, this is doable. I mean, depending on what GPA you're at to start. I was at 2.4, right? So I actually didn't, wasn't even able to apply to AT, so I was at 2.78. So close, I emailed them and uh, asking if they could grant me an exception, they couldn't. And there was enough time for me to retake classes to bump it over, so um, it was all right, it was all right. So that's another school that you guys might be able to apply to. And I'll show you guys one last one, just because I want to. Um, let's go to a school like, hmm, where's Tennessee at? There we go. Another school I applied to. Tennessee State University. Uh, there we are, Tennessee State University. So they have, they're pretty special in how they look at their students as well. Um, require the GRE, yes, 150, 150. Okay, let's look at the GPA. Only the program specific prereq. So it doesn't matter which cumulative is, they don't care about what you did in your past, they care about how bad you want it, what are you willing to do now? And uh, so I got interviewed there, I got accepted there as well. Dr. Lehman, super nice guy. Um, had a great time there as well. Almost, almost ended up going there. All right, so those so those are the kind of things that you want to look for. I would recommend uh, if you have a specific location you want to start out with, maybe it's your home state or state you've always wanted to go to, start with those states first. Just go through each school, look at their prereqs and or their admission requirements and see if you can get there. Like if, if you give yourself a year or whatever your deadline is that you're setting for yourself, what GPA can you get to? So if you were to substitute and remember, you're looking for schools to substitute your retakes, right? So if, if that were the case and you were to take all the classes you need to, you got all A's and B's or whatever you predict you're gonna get, what would your GPA look like? And then look at these schools 
go one by one, see which ones match up with you and make a list. And then once you have a list of five, 10, 15, however many schools you, you come up with, uh, now you can start narrowing down to five by um, looking at their description or looking at their prereqs, seeing what classes they require, um, or just by even visiting the school, see, see what they're about, see what the culture is there, see what's around the school, talking to students that have been to the school. You know, we live in an amazing time where uh, it's really easy to connect with people on either the pre-doc page or the low GPA pre-doc page. Um, and you just can put out posts like, hey, who's, who's uh, applied to this school, who's been to this school, Sometimes it's even students are currently going there and you can message them and be like, hey, uh, would you ever be free or would you ever be down to get on a call? I'm really interested in this school and I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about it, what you like, what you don't like. So that's what I would do while searching for these schools and let's head back to the video. All right, so let's recap and let's put everything together. So we're gonna go on PTCast. We're gonna look at these schools by state or by name if you know which ones you wanna look at. And these are the things we wanna look at. Number one, your cumulative GPA requirement from the school. It has to be lower than your target cumulative GPA, or you can look for a school that doesn't even require a cumulative GPA at all. Um, those are rare, but, they're, but they are out there. Uh, next thing you wanna look for is the prereq GPA, the ones that replace the prereq grade when you retake classes. So your highest grade is the only one that counts. And next, you wanna look at your last 60 units. You want schools that look at that. You also want to look at schools that require GRE. When you have a low GPA, a low cumulative GPA, you need everything you can to bolster your application up. You want to stand out in all these other categories. Another thing you can look for is the experiences. This is harder to find. It's usually not on the PTCAST pages. This you'll have to do some extra research, look at the school page, see what they value. And lastly, once you do this, you come up with your list of five to 10 schools. I would recommend emailing, calling, contacting the school somehow, their admissions department, and finding out how they rank their applicants. Now, before we end this video, I'm coming up with an email list for low GPA pre-PTs that are part of this community. And so if you wanna join it, you'll be receiving exclusives that I'll be coming up with in the near future, such as a list of PT schools that are low GPA friendly and other future exclusives that I honestly haven't thought up of yet but they are sure to come. And so if you are interested, there will be a link in the description. And as soon as I'm done with the list, I'll be sure to email those out to all of you. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for joining me for this video. If you found it helpful, as always, smash that like button, helps the algorithm, helps the channel grow. And if you wanna stay up to date with all the latest content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace. Come on, y'all get the man.